on an all-new Dr. Phil. My mom gave away her retirement and everything she has. A mom hooked by a love scam. I've wired James around $265,000. Does it bother you that you've never seen or met this guy? The place that he says he works does not exist. In his passport picture, if you look closely, there's a woman in the background. This is a fake passport. Is that him calling you right now? Yes, it's him. Oh, my God. You are a scumbag scam artist, and we know who you are, and you're going to give this lady her money back. What do you think of that? Let's do it. Out of the show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Take it. Take it. I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are my everything. Thank you for loving me the way no one can. You understand me and you know just how to make things right. You will never know just how much I love you, but I will spend the rest of my days trying to show you. Now, most women would love to get a romantic email like that from the man of their dreams, right? Well, my first guest, Sabrina, says she won the love lottery with the handsome James Conner, who she says wrote that very email, even though the two have never met. My husband passed away of 2012. I had been married for 14 years. I was very lonely. And then, two months after my husband passed away, I met James on Match. He sent me a email letting me know that he was very much interested in me, thought I was very pretty, and he gave me his phone name of James Connor. James has an accent, kind of a French accent. Hey, baby. A little bit maybe German, but mostly French. That's what it sounds like. James told me that he was born in Germany, but his parents came here to the United States when he was a baby. James is a civil engineer in London working on a bridge, London Bridge. I was really drawn to James through his voice. So sweet and so nice. He made me feel very good. And we got close really fast. I felt like I was falling in love with James about a week and a half. James felt the same way. He was falling in love with me too. I consider James to be my boyfriend. And I am in love with James. And I believe James Conner loves me too. And someday, we'll get married. But I've never met James Conner. Well, Sabrina says James Conner makes her feel warm inside every time they talk. And she cannot wait for him to return to the U.S. so they can get married. All he needs, you guessed it, he needs some money. He needs some money to help finance his building project so he can repay some debts and then save enough for a plane ticket home to the woman of his dreams. James asked me for money three weeks after we met online. James called and said he had run out of money for construction materials. He asked me if I would loan him the money. James sent me an invoice from the company he needed to purchase the supplies from. It looked legit to me, and I wired $8,900. $50 to a bank in China. James said he would pay me back with interest. He gave me his word and he said he was a man of his word. Later on, James told me that the bank would not let him make draws off of this deposit. I got a weird sick feeling in my stomach. I asked, how are you going to pay me this money back? And he sent me a photo of a bank draft the contractor had given to him. He thought that he was going to be able to deposit that into a bank because he didn't have any accounts there in the United Kingdom. They did not let him. And James informed me of this and schmoozed it over. We talked it out. James called and said he was running into a big problem with his project. The suppliers needed $89,850 or he was going to be thrown in jail and not be able to come back to the United States and pay me back. 
I sent him the money. I've wired James money many times. I've also sent him lots of Western Union. They couldn't go directly to the United Kingdom, and I was always very puzzled by that. He was working with a gentleman named Michael in Nigeria. James said the reason I had to send it to Nigeria was he was concerned about his identity in the United Kingdom. I have wired James money 35 to maybe even 40 times. 48,850 to pay off his suppliers. $4,350 for the airfare. 2,150 several for 1,500. Some were only 500, 300 for food. He's been racking up a pretty hefty bill at the hotel. In June, he needed 14,500. 17,500 in July. The total amount of money that I've sent James Connor is around 265,000. Is he worth it? Yes. You started falling in love with him after the first week, right? Yes, I did. What, what triggered it with you? Um, it was the <clears throat> words. It was, um, a lot of it was the things that he said, his voice, um, the way he talked to me, and um, that he's very much in love with me. And, um, you know, he cannot wait till he can hold me in his arms and tell me a lot of things that he hasn't been able to tell me. Right. You've got a little background on him that you've compiled, because you didn't just go into this blindly. You yes. asked some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been divorced yes. for two and a half years. He has a 15-year-old son, Kelvin. Yes. Right? Uh, he owns a home right here in L.A. Yes. He's a civil engineer and mm -hmm. a private contractor, uh -huh. and he's working on a bridge project in London. Yes. Has it bothered you? Does it bother you that you've never seen or met this guy? Yes. It's so easy to come and go from London. What's his problem? Well, he said it's very complicated um, that he's, um, some of his suppliers, I guess, that he's used have caused him some problems. Uh, but he won't go into any detail because he's a very private man and he just doesn't want to share those things with me, but continues to say he will share them with me as soon as we're together. As soon as you're together. Yes. But you uh -huh. say you sent him $260,000? Yes, approximately. Uh -huh. Over a quarter of a million dollars yes. you shipped uh -huh. him. Do you know that you can buy a ticket from Kansas City to London for $682? Yes. Why haven't you gone over there and... Surprise! I don't, well, I don't have his physical address of where he lives. I don't have, I don't, well, he's, he's in a motel, our hotel there. But you're paying the bill. Right, you but know I don't where know what is. hotel. I don't know what hotel he He didn't in. tell you what hotel it no, is? No, no, I do not know the hotel that he's at. Complex is the name of the company that he says that but he's what, working But what if you went for. over there and your cell phone rang and you said, guess what? Mm -hmm. I'm Love here. Love of my life. Mm -hmm. I am in London. I know. And, and, I know. And meet them. And then, and then you, they got these things in London called judges, and you could get married there. You could, you, you could be a London bride working on a London bridge. You could be right there. <laughs> I mean, why not do that? Why not do it today? I, I'll uh, buy you a ticket. I know, but I can't go right now. I don't have a passport. I need to still get a passport. I haven't done Well, that. we'll get you a passport. There's, there's a passport office right here. We'll, we'll ship you over there. <laughs> I'll FedEx you if need be. <laughs> he says to you, you are everything. Thank you for loving me the way no one can. Well, let's check Pig Busters. No. And later. Here's Cash Cow. Is that him calling you right now? Yes, it's him. Oh, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. See, I told you. I told you this guy is relentless. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Come on, this is going to get me mad. Don't describe me. I need you. Go away. He wasn't going to come on the show. I'm an abused husband. Do you know what that means, Dr. Phil? I get my face bashed in every day. But once he started talking... You people are laughing. My home is a mess. He wouldn't stop. You're right. You're right. Congratulations. Congratulations. You've got a know-it-all attitude. What a farce. Crawl down off your high horse, buddy. Tomorrow. Then on Friday, child molester. We know he's innocent. You weren't there that night. Or a soldier wrongly convicted. Have you ever made false allegations prior to this? Yes, I have. That's Friday.
James has attempted to come back to the U.S. three times, but all three attempts have failed. He's either been arrested or in jail or beat up. That's some of the excuses that I've heard. I don't believe I'm being scammed, and I do believe that James is real. So why hasn't he been here? Let's look at, he's given you some reasons that he hasn't been here. He said the police won't let him leave the country. For various reasons. So you're because involved he needs to with pay the suppliers. criminal. You're in love with a criminal. Well, he hasn't told me everything about it. I mean, I, there's, so he said there's a lot of things, like <clears throat> I said. I mean, there's a well, lot to this. The I, police don't have my passport. I mean, anybody here, the police have your passport? No. But so, he, he has his passport back now. Okay, he got it back. Yes, he got it back. Okay, but he uh -huh. was jailed for owing suppliers money. Yes, um, uh, because he hadn't paid on time. When he had some, some documents or some contracts had been set up, and he, he hadn't paid the money back on a timely manner like he was supposed to. I talked to one of the barristers there about this, and if he owes suppliers money in England just like here, that's civil. That's not criminal. You don't go, they don't have debtor's prison anymore. You, you, you don't go like to you jail. you can't leave the country if you don't, I mean, even if you owe money, you can still leave the country, right? Is that well, you think? Well, I thought that, yes, that I, I actually yeah. looked it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you saw, it's yes. civil, it's not criminal. Uh -huh. You don't go to jail, you say jail for owing suppliers money. Uh -huh. You don't, if that's true, I'll put a lot of people in jail. They owe me money. You can lock somebody up. So you know that's not. Yes. I questioned everything. I mean, okay. I questioned everything. Then he says he, said, he owes suppliers yeah. money, and so he's jailed again, apparently for owing money again. U.S. Embassy refused to help him get back to the United States. He said he went to the embassy for help. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he needs $1,800 for airfare. Mm -hmm. Well, I can get him here for 682 <laughs> Well, let me show you something because okay. you said that one of the things that really got you was his love letters yes. I mean because yes. and we, we said this guy is a is a wordsmith here's what he said I'm James Connor uh, but you can as well call me Mr. Wright I'm cute sweet loving and I'm honest loyal passionate truthful trustworthy faithful and a gentleman now that was his profile right and, and you that's saw that. That's part of it. Yeah, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. That's, mm -hmm. yeah, I put the little dots down there to be completely <laughs> accurate. It's unlike him, I'm specific. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but there is a website out there called Pigbusters, mm -hmm. and it's a scammer awareness website. Okay. And it's out there to help people know if an offer they're getting for products or whatever, anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, is honest or not. Mm -hmm. And so we checked this language, and this is what came up on Pigbusters. Mm -hmm. But you can as well call me Mr. Right. I'm cute, sweet, loving, and I'm honest, loyal, passionate, truthful, trustworthy, faithful, and a gentleman. So this exact, precise language mm -hmm. is on this scammer's website, this is a template. This is a template. There are people in this world that they, they troll with templates. They, they put these things out there and send them to a hundred women and see if anybody bites. Um, all right, let's go on. He says to you, you are my everything. Thank you for loving me the way no one can. You understand me, and you know just how to make things right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's check pig busters. Mm. No. Mm. Mm. You are my everything. Thank you for loving me the way no one can. Do you see us verbatim? Only God's creation can compare to the beauty that I see in you. That warms your heart, did I mean? It did, come on, yes. Did it? Oh, yeah, yeah. it did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. He didn't write that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's on Pig Busters. He just cut and pasted. It is verbatim. Makes me feel terrible. Let me tell you how verbatim this is. 
It's even got the same typos. Copy and pasted. That apostrophe is in the wrong place. In both of them. Sick to my stomach. Well, take a deep breath. Next, we're going to meet Sabrina's daughter and son-in-law and find out what they discovered when Homeland Security took a look at James Connors' passport. We'll be right back. I don't think my mom has ever been this stupid in her life. I told my mom she needed to be committed. A five-year-old wouldn't believe this garbage. And later... That's why I was at my wit's end and I contacted the show because she said, until somebody can show me and prove to me that that picture, because you're in love with the picture and a voice, is somebody else, I won't believe it. This February. At age 19, I was married to the prophet of the FLDS people. This 85-year-old man who has 64 other wives. A former sect member confronts her polygamous father. My father condoned my marriage. How does that make sense to a father to marry his daughter off to the crib keeper? Plus, is this father killing his child? You have an addict for a daughter and you're giving her money. Are you telling me that you don't know she's buying? drugs with it. You took her to a drug house to get it. A five-year-old wouldn't believe this garbage. I've done everything I can to prove to my mother that he's not real. I made my mom give me a copy of James's passport. Sean and I went to the police. They confirmed that there was no one by that name with that passport number. I told my mom she was going out of her mind and that she needed to be committed. The bank got suspicious because there were several different people going into his account online. To have Sabrina committed, she has to pose a threat to herself. And I said to Sarah, let's just say she is a threat to herself because she's going to be homeless. I don't think my mom has ever been this stupid in her life. I'm at my wit's end, and I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Sarah says her mom wholeheartedly believes James Conner is real, despite the mounting evidence that shows she is being scammed. My mom missed so many red flags about this guy. She's never met him. She said that he sounded French. Hi. He didn't sound French to me at all. James was supposed to be coming to the U.S. four different times. He had to wrap up this, he had to wrap up that. He went to jail, he went to the hospital because he had a panic attack. My mom gave away her retirement and everything she has, all for a Photoshop person. Okay, Sarah, Sean, you've been telling your mother this is a scam, right? Um, back when my mom decided to go on to match, um, I warned her. You know, there's online dating scammers. Um, if anybody asks you for money, you know that they're not real. When she told us about the $170,000, I was pregnant. We were supposed to go baby um, shower shopping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she told me that she gave all of her money to him. She didn't have anything left. And I was devastated, and I made, called my husband, made him come home from work. And um, he said, Sabrina, let me call him. And we tried to call him numerous times, and he was, you know, it was late there. And then all of a sudden, after 15 phone calls, you know, he picks up, hello, you know. And then she runs into the bathroom, and James, James, what's wrong? Because he was supposed to have come home. He was supposed to have been on a flight. And you... You, at that point, you full well believed he's, he's going to show up, he's going to pay all of this back, and everything is going to be okay. Yes, I was thinking that way, yes, <clears throat> definitely, yes. Right. And so, Sean, you come home from work, I mean, you, you guys are trying to call this guy, right? When he finally picked up, it first was just a regular conversation, but then at one point in time, ended up telling him, you know, my wife and I know that you're a scammer, but... Sarah and I are, are prepared to go ahead and pay $1,100 so Sabrina can fly uh, 
to London to come see you. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great. When's she coming? Well, she'll be there tomorrow. He started backpedaling as Oh, to... I don't want you, her to come here because I don't want her to have to deal with what I'm going through here. And I, and to be honest, I, at that point in time, I just wanted to shake you. But you've seen his passport, right? I saw his passport, yes. So we actually did some investigation on this passport, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you guys have worked very hard on this. We, we have as well. Let, let's take a look at, at, Sabrina, what we've found here. Um, requirements for a U.S. passport versus his passport. Now, on a, on a, on a U.S. passport, you, you can go get a passport photo at, like, these different places, but they're required to have a white background. Um, his passport has a colored background. The photo can't cover the U.S. seal. His photo, which we'll look at in just a second, covers part of the U.S. seal. It's not valid for 10 years. It's valid for five. And he says he got it from the California Passport Agency, and no such place exists. That doesn't exist. Now, here is an actual passport, and you can see the seal comes over like a watermark onto the picture. His blocks the seal. And if you notice in his passport picture, if you look closely, there's a woman in the background. There's a person standing in the background. But James gave the excuse to you, remember? He wanted that to he secure altered, his identity, so he did alter. He, he, he admitted he altered it. Well, that's actually, him in the picture. actually, we have information about that as well. Uh, because here's a Homeland Security letter. Mm -hmm. And review of our database confirms this passport number does not match the name of the passport, Connor James, date of birth, 25 January 66. A further search of the name does not reveal any U.S. passport for that person. There's been no travel on that name or date of birth out of the U.S. It would appear this is possibly a picture scammed off the Internet and then made up names and information photoshopped onto the picture. I do not believe this is a copy of an actual passport that has been fraudulently altered. He had told me that he altered the passport and that... He's but Homeland Security, which is a pretty legitimate group of folks, they're saying that's not even an altered passport. Right. That's just a made-up document. You, you get that. I'm, I'm trying to... Yes, I understand. I'm trying to build yes. a critical mass yes. of information yes, here. Yes, I do understand. Now, what criminal act did Sabrina ask her son-in-law to do? Well, we'll find out about that next. My mom only has about a month left before she can no longer pay her mortgage. I'm very afraid that my mom's going to have to file for bankruptcy and lose her home. My mom could have paid off her house and had money in the bank, but she gave away her retirement and everything she has to James. And later... I tried to call you yesterday. I tried to call you yesterday. And tell you. Why, why, why are you crying? Because of the way you're reacting. I was reaching out for any help I could get to get you back because I'm broke. My mom asked my husband Sean to pretend that he was her employer so my mother could get a loan and refinance. She sent me a text stating what her position was and what her yearly income was to be able to have approval. My husband thought that it was for her personal use so she could survive. I told her I'd be more than happy to do it for her. Sabrina got the money and sent the money to James. Sean admits he agreed to pretend to be his mother-in-law Sabrina's employer to help her get a loan so she could get her finances in order. But he and his wife Sarah claim that they had no idea Sabrina was still sending money to James Conner, a potential catfish that she is in love with. 
but has never met in person. Sabrina says that James Connor said he works for a company called Complex to build a bridge in the UK. Well, we have a statement from the managing director of Complex, Ian Harriman, and he says, and I quote, I can confirm that we don't know anyone called James Connor, and certainly in 2012, we weren't building any bridges. Complex isn't building a bridge. They don't know James Conner. It's made up. The place that he says he works does not exist. I told her all these things. Every time I would do it, she would sit, stick up for him and say, he's not going to tell me everything until he gets here. So uh, that's why I was at my wit's end and I contacted the show because she said, until somebody can show me and prove to me that that picture, that picture, because you're in love with the picture and a voice, is somebody else, I won't believe it. Well, That's here are the works. pictures. We, we're showing these pictures, knowing that the man in these photographs is not a scammer. Uh, whoever he is, we want him to know his photo is being mm -hmm. used to perpetrate a scam. If this is your picture, please reach out to us. It's quite possibly your photo is being used by other scammers as well. So this person exists, but it's not James Conner. He isn't a contractor in the UK. He isn't building bridges, and he isn't paying your money to somebody else. You, you know he's a man of resources, right? Because uh -huh. he sent yes. you his bank account, yes. a copy of his bank statement uh, from Chase. Um, Sabrina says that James sent her uh, a login and password for his Chase bank account, uh, which has an $8 million balance, okay? Now, this account was created on July 21st of 2013. The expiration date of the account is July 21st, 2014. This is a fake database. We trace the database back. Uh, Doug Kane is a former special agent for the FBI and a private investigator who investigated James Conner and says the account does not exist. Doug, right here. Meet Doug Kane. Is this account real? Absolutely not. Not even? Uh, how do you know? Well, the account, first it was open in a short period of time. And then he sent you a password and login. Yes. Um, once that was good for 24 hours. Uh, once that was in and checked, they shut it down. The site that you referred to was very close to a chase site, but it wasn't an actual chase site. And that is very typical in the way these scams are perpetrated. They identify something that's close. You're not going to look at it that close. You're going to believe it. And then once it's accomplished what it's supposed to do, they shut it down and it's gone forever. Okay. Now, he also did some more checking for us um, because he, he gave you an address on Hyde Park, right? Mm -hmm. That I sent flowers to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is Hyde Park. There aren't any houses in Hyde Park. This, this is Hyde Park. It, it's a park over in uh, Knightsbridge, and we, we were there. It's like Central Park in New York. It's, it's a park. The, look. It's a park. He also, interestingly, told you that he lived in Manchester, and it was a 20-minute drive to Heathrow. About that. That's a three-hour drive. I mean, even little things he's telling you aren't true. That's a three-hour drive. Sabrina called James Conner to ask him to fly back to the United States to prove he loves her. Well, he's obviously not here, but maybe that will change. We'll see when we come back. I'm about to make a phone call to James Conner. You know who Dr. Phil is, don't you? Yeah. He's invited me and you to be on his show. I don't understand why you're being Dr. Phil. I was reaching out for any help I could get to get you back because I'm broke. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. If he's like this at home, imagine what happens on the show. You're right. You're right. Congratulations. Congratulations. You've got a know-it-all attitude. What a farce. That's tomorrow.
about to make a phone call to James Conner and invite him to be on the Dr. Phil show with me to come here and prove to everyone that he is real. Hi. Hey, baby. I have some very good news for you. You know who Dr. Phil is, don't you? Dr. Yeah, Dr. Phil? Yeah. Well, babe, I'm here in Hollywood, California right now, and he's invited me and you to be on his show. That that is the good news that you can come back. You're telling me you're, you're in California right now. Babe, I'm in California right now. And and when did you get to LA? I got to LA yesterday. And you never keep people saying about it. You never even tell me anything about it until you get to LA and now you're calling me telling me you, you have a show for you. You mean you don't you're not getting the least bit excited about you could be on a plane today coming back. <laughs> I was just contacted. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand why you have been you seen me up the field and getting put up to them and talking to his out and you, you didn't even tell me anything about it. And you you were expecting me to just get involved with them and you know? I expected you you know what I expected much different. I expected much different from you. I you know, babe, babe, you know, I don't walk I don't walk that way. Whatever is happening, you have to call me and keep your question. I'll let me know what you whichever steps you're taking. I tried to call you yesterday. I tried to call you yesterday and tell you. Why is this? Why are you crying? Because of the way you're reacting. I was reaching out for any help I could get to get you back because I'm broke. Uh, I'm going to think about it. You think really hard about this because this is for you and me. This is for us. Are you back? When, honey? Yeah, I'm gonna get back. When? Yeah, I'm gonna get back. Call me back right away. Right. Okay, babe. Bye. Uh, how long before he called you back? He didn't. He didn't call me back. I called him. And did you talk to him? Yes. What did he say? Um, he said that, um, why would I go behind his back and do such a thing? And that there was no way he could do that, that he could come back. No way. Why? Because he just did, because he's, he's a very private man, very, very private about everything. And he would not risk getting his son involved with something like this, too. We have your phone here. Would you try and call him? I'd like to talk to him. Okay. Yes. Dial the boy up. I okay. want to talk to him. Okay. Hello? Yes. Hello, James? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I uh, want to talk to you for a few minutes here. Is that okay? I need to talk to you. Yeah. Hi, hi James. Uh, this is Dr. Phil, and I'm, I'm here. Uh, with Sabrina, and we're recording this phone call for broadcast. Can you hear me okay? Thank you very much. Uh, where, where are you right now? You're in London? Yeah, I'm in London. Yeah. Well, you know, that's great because I have a producer in London that would like to bring you a gift from us. So let me have your street address, and I'll have him run it over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, you uh, you guys have had pretty much an internet. Um, you guys have had pretty much an internet relationship, right? Yeah. Well, you know there are really great advances in internet technology these days, and you know both with telephones and internet, it's now possible to backtrack people to their originating IP addresses, and to be able to track them down. And you know what, buddy? You are a scumbag scam artist, and we know who you are, and we know where you are, and we're going to, by God, find you, and you're going to give this lady her money back. What do you think of that? I'm sorry? Hello. This guy's a fraud. You've been had. Is that him calling you right now? 
Yes, it's him. Oh, let me talk to him. Yeah, let me talk to him. See, I told you. I told you this guy is relentless. Hello? The only thing worse than being in a dead-end, exploitive relationship for a year is being in a dead-end, exploitive relationship for a year and one day. Mm -hmm. Only thing worse than that is a year and two days. The day you admit that someone has preyed upon your kind soul, someone has preyed upon your kind spirit, is the day you start building your life back. This guy is in an internet cafe in Nigeria. And the story is always the same. I'm over here doing international work. I'm trapped. All I need is money to get back to you, babe. At some point, you've got to let your intellect overpower your emotion and say, I've been suckered here. And we might as well get it all on the table at the same time. That money? Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Gone. You will never see a dime of that money again. It is not recoverable. I've shown you the facts. Doug Kane down here has researched it. Your daughter and son-in-law have researched it. These are the facts. Now, are you going to believe the facts, or are you going to believe what you desperately want to be true? I want to believe the facts. Then you need to admit to yourself you've been had. Is that him calling you right now? Yes, it's him. Well, let me talk to him. Let me talk to him. See, I told you. I told you this guy is relentless. Hello? Go ahead, Serena. You talk to him. Yes. You want to what? Why do you think, why do you think I'm doing this? Do you know how bad you have hurt me? Do you know what you've done to me? You've ruined my life. I have no money left. I have nothing. And all you've done has been lying to me. I know, I know. I know everyone you say it now. You know everyone is what? Yeah, See, that's what I'm saying. He's relentless. I mean, he has been relentless with me. It doesn't matter what I do or say. And I have been you're sucked a, up in a bubble. I feel like I've been in a bubble. You're a whale. You're six figures, mm -hmm. man. You're in the court. You're, you crossed the quarter million dollar mark. You are a home run for him. He knows I'm on your show. He knows he Why would he do that? He knows your emotions. He's calling you back to try to dissuade you because he's scared. Because I said, we can track your IP backwards, you scumbag scammer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get in your ass. That's why he's calling you back. He knows he's about to lose his, his six-figure mama, his fat cat, you know, the big, the big mama. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've told you that before. You're his cash cow. That's what he calls you. He's probably got off the phone with you and he's talking to his other little friends there. I'm about to I lose her. I don't know what I'm going to do. I am going to need to call her back. There goes the her money mouth. pit. He knows how to get you, mama. I've told you that Swap a million times. And until you tell him, listen, you... you I can't say it on national television. Sure television. you can. I got a bleeper. I just, I just said you. Sarah. You never call me ever again. I will hunt you down and I will. You asked for it. Kill you like the scumbag that you are and you won't do it. And until you pick up that phone and you tell him never to call you ever again and you lose my number and I could block him. I've told you a million times I'll block his phone number from calling you. It makes me so hurt and angry. And until you pick up that phone and you do it, he's going to keep calling you and praying on you and getting your every motion. What's really sad is there's been too many times when you've been over at the house. And <laughs> You're doing great, Hi, sweetheart. <laughs>
Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. I, I understand. I, I understand. You, 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 you buried your husband. You were very lonely. This was a time that you were vulnerable. That's who they prey on. It, it happens. And he got me. <laughs> he got me good. And I had Widow, too, on my profile. I did put Widow, too. So he, he was able to really reel me in. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now look me in the eye and tell me you know this was a con, this was a scam. I truly believe that this, this is a scam. Right. Right. You, looked, you looked away. You looked away. Look me in the eye and tell me, Dr. Phil, I get it. I understand. He doesn't exist. Tell me, as painful as it is, I get I got scammed. He's not real. Dr. Phil, I get it. I've been scammed. I truly, truly believe it. And it's over. It's over. You're going to change yes. your number. Yes. You're going to block that. You're going to take down your profile, unplug, go offline for yes. a while, and, and be done. Yes. And this is going to leave you with a lot of victimization feelings. And I, I want you to to let me get you some professional help with that. Somebody can help you unravel this ball of emotions and yarn and, and get you back. Because I don't want you damaged for life. I don't want you broken. I don't want your trust destroyed. And what you know is you're around people now that just love you. They're not judging you. I mean, th these, these guys love you. No. Will you accept that? Yes. Let us all help you. I mean, you, you, you're a good egg and pretty hot to boot, so, uh, I mean, come on, come on. All right, I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Doug Kane, former supervisory special agent of the FBI and president of Risk of Control Strategies. Uh, if you suspect someone you love might be being scammed, check the phone number they're calling from. Doug Kane says if it starts with plus four four seven oh, oh my gosh. it is almost guaranteed to be a scam four four seven numbers um, and scam emails means you're dealing with criminals based in nigeria according to doug so thanks so much for being here today so long uh,